Welcome to the conclusion of the 2014-15 Seasons Battle of the Hockey Pool Guides. Hello, I'm Dimitri. Let's find out which guides are still alive and who the winner will be. Seven of our finalists, Dauber Hockey, House of Puck, Dauber's Monthly 300, Hockey the Magazine, The Hockey News, Le Droit Le Soleil, and The Opiated Sherpa, earned passage to the finals through their performances in the semifinals. The eighth guide, McKean's Hockey, had to claw their way into this final battle through the repechage events. Looking at the total missed opportunity scoring, five of the final eight are found in the first half of the rankings. The three other finalists can be found near the top of the second half of the missed opportunity scoring. Once we have the data, we will revisit the missed opportunity scores for the total number of players that were selected in the final battles. But until then, we get to look at the tail of the tape for each finalist. Darba Hockey is the odds-on favorite as they easily moved their way through the qualifiers and semis to get here and scored very well with the missed opportunities. If there are any doubts, they come from the fact that they have not faced House of Puck, Darba's own monthly 300, the Hockey News, and McKean's Hockey. Similarly, House of Puck also had a great showing through their qualifiers and semis. There is a gentle weakness in the very short drafts, but the larger concern is how will they fare when going up against Dauber Hockey. A bit of an odd duck is next. Dauber's monthly 300 had a very good top 10 missed opportunity score, and the results reflect that in the very short drafts. However, they share the same DNA as Dauber Hockey, so they may be fighting amongst themselves and therefore weaken each other. House of Puck has beaten Dauber's monthly 300 once before. Hockey the Magazine improved upon their ranking when going from the qualifying rounds to the semifinals, but if you look at their victory results, they won 2,000 fewer simulations. The difference can be attributed to how dominant the number one guide was in each battle grouping. The Bible of the Hockey World is up next, and they fared well in the short to middle length drafts. The start is going to be a key factor for them. If they fall too far back too early, it will be extremely difficult to make up the lost ground. Yet again, we see Le Droit Le Soleil back in the finals. A very consistent list. It might be because they are an aggregator of a few other lists. But the returns on the 2014-15 simulations so far have not been dominant. Will it change in the finals? The opiated Sherpa should count themselves as being very lucky to have made it into the finals. They were a mere 53 wins from being displaced by ESPN for that wildcard opening and being forced instead to go through the repechage. Lastly, the repechage winner, McKean's Hockey, clawed their way back into the finals, but will their fate be any different than before? Twice they've gone up against Dauber's Monthly 300 and the Hockey News, and twice they failed. Third time lucky? Which of the finalists do you think will win? We will give you 15 seconds to make your decision, and while we wait, here is a list of the guides which we are actively looking for. Please contact us if you have any of them. We want to ensure that we find the true champion. In a major upset, we find House of Puck in 8th place. Next came McKean's Hockey, but this wasn't as shocking. The Opiated Sherpa snuck in for 6th. Hockey the Magazine placed in 5th with over 10,000 victories. Fourth place went to Le Droit Le Soleil. The Hockey News managed to secure third place with 26,000 wins. This means that one of the two lists from Dauber will be the champ, but which one? And without further ado, the title goes to Dauber Hockey, a clear victory by earning 25,000 more wins above its more futuristic monthly 300 rankings. Congratulations to Dauber Hockey for earning the title as Battle of the Hockey Pool Guides champion for the 2014-15 season. It will go well with their Missed Opportunity Awards. Let us look at the results from the finals by draft length to see what occurred. It was the monthly 300 that jumped out to a great early lead over everyone. They pushed that lead until the 25 round drafts. This is when Dauber Hockey made their move. The lead switched hands in the maximum draft lengths which turned out to be 44 rounds. The Hockey News, Le Droit Le Soleil, and Hockey the Magazine were the only other guides to put up some sort of resistance, but it was too little and too infrequent. 
When comparing the missed opportunities scoring for the top 352 players, Darbar Hockey had the lowest score amongst the finalists, and only a small fraction was due to unprojected players. McKean's Hockey's numbers looked similar, but they were not even remotely close to performing as well as Darbar Hockey did. Perhaps it was the difference in the unprojected players that derailed their efforts. In terms of victories by draft order position, it was a horrible washout when having one of the first three selections, but having the wheel pick wasn't much better either. This time a middle pick was best. Overall, the results by draft position were pretty even after 2.1 million simulations. That does not mean that every guide had an equal chance. What it does mean is that the opportunity to win was available if you had the right list, even if you didn't have an early pick. Please consider liking the videos and subscribing to this channel. You can also look at my blog postings by going to www.hockeypoolguideaid.blogspot.com. Until next time, stay safe.